My projects so far have been very standard. Nothing unique to break out of the games I have uploaded to the web. Recently, I was given a chance to break out and build a tool to do an excessively repetitive task. This is the making of my AI Magic the Gathering card creator, Ristic Sentinel. For this project, there are many moving pieces. The first challenge is to generate text, and then be able to take that text and put it onto the card. Then, we are going to want to change the card frame to match that text, and then we're going to want to generate art, so that way the full card can be realized. I started by making a list of every Magic the Gathering set, and then I went and found every card frame that I could. After some research, the best source for the magic card frame was Card Conjurer. Before it got DCMA'd by Wizards of the Coast, it was my go-to for creating custom cards. Now this project relies on high-quality frames, and this program is able to export high-quality pieces of those frames, which means I won't have to cut them up later. I was able to find a copy of this website on GitHub, this repository allows me to run a local version of the Card Conjurer website, which means now I have access to every frame that I need to make this project work. Now, we need to create brand new text that has never existed before. The current standard for large language models is ChatGPT. If you've been living under a rock, this program can take an input and generate code essays, and letters to your mom, all for free. We can use the API access of this website to send a question and get back an answer. That question can be the full setup for a card frame. On the standard website, all it takes is a few sentences and we can get some decent rules text. Everything else though needs to be formatted in a certain way. My first solution to this problem was to just copy and paste it into the Card Conjurer website. But, as you're gonna see, this is super tedious and it ends up not working too well. There is nothing left but to start the engine. Unity is the Swiss army knife of programming. Its versatility is gonna be invaluable when we're trying to connect different APIs and exporting to files. Once the project loaded, the first thing I did was I imported all of the assets I was going to need and all of the packages that I was going to use for things like UI and being able to make API calls. With the whole project set up, I decided to start on UI. With how many pieces are needed, I went with three windows, one for the frame, one for the art, and one for the text. I went back to Card Conjurer grabbed the basic card, and was able to start fully laying out the program and how it was going to be used. After setting up the basic UI, I decided to move on to text formatting. This was probably the most bad part ever, because Unity doesn't really handle text well you have to use this extension called Text Mesh Pro. And then you gotta deal with all of its quirks and how it works and how fonts work with it. And it just ends up being a whole problem. I spent more time doing this than I'd like to admit, but at least in the end, it looks very close to the original Magic cards. And not only that, but all of my exports have very crisp text. The time was worth it, but it is just so tedious to get it set up correctly. Once the text was implemented, I decided that it was time to get text generation in place so that way I can get those two systems connected. The idea being that you press a button, you get generated text, and then it automatically fills it in the card. This is part of that time-saving bit. I don't want to have to copy and paste. 
I want my code to be able to splice those strings and shove it into the card and just make it work. I just want it to work. It just works. The next order of business was to be able to save a card that got generated. I was able to do this by creating a render texture and hooking it up to a camera so that way whenever I click a button, it will take all of those pixels and render it to a huge PNG and just dump it into the Unity folder. At this point, I could have stopped here and just created a whole bunch of cards and stole a bunch of art and called it a day. But like, that's not like cool, you know? I want it to be cool. I want to be cool. I'm not cool. All right, no, but for real. I wanted to be able to implement stable diffusion and get art generation working. So I was able to find another GitHub repository that lets me hook up to the local version of stable diffusion. What this will let me do is be able to make an API call to my own computer and get back a new image. Before testing it out, I decided to fully create a new frame editor so that way I could manually add what frame I wanted from any set and any date in Magic. And then I decided to test it out. It needed some work, but it was much better than before, and it was so much faster. After creating a whole list of these new cards, I decided that I wanted to stop and print out a few of them so that way I could playtest it with a couple of friends. While my printer may not be the best, it did do well enough for us to see the general idea of what these cards would look like and seeing all these frames together made it really feel like this project was going to work. I decided to make some tweaks that my friend suggested and add in a little bit more oomph into all of the different bits of the program, mainly so that way I could streamline the workflow. This was going to take some time regardless. In the end, it took me around 15 hours to make all of the cards. However, Originally, using Card Conjurer, it could have taken me easily 40 or 50 just to get the basic idea before even playtesting. It was a lifesaver. This is the footage of those final cards that are now off to be printed. This part was really awesome because I really was able to connect with each card, but it didn't take a super long time to create one individually. And throughout this entire project, I was going to be making a set of 30 to 35 of each color of card, and that way when we put all of these cards together, there's an equal amount of red cards to green cards, and that way, when we go to play it, every player would have an equal amount of each thing, and they can kind of build a deck that they want, even whether it's drafting or kind of like a pre-release style. Finally, I uploaded all of the cards into MakePlayingCards.com. It's a really cool website that lets you print out cards on cardstock, and they cut it to the correct size of real Magic cards. It's really cool. It's really awesome. It was pretty damn expensive, but you know what? It's going to look great. It has like a three-week turnaround time, but at least it's done, and I get to play with the little program I made a little bit more. So, I mean, hey, pretty good, right? For now, I think this is the end of Rhystic Sentinel. I think I'll come back to it into the future and make it a little bit better and make it only one program so you don't have to have three different web browsers open with different web servers. But eh, for now, this is pretty decent. I can't really put it on the GitHub because it uses so many different people's like code and has like API keys and everything. But I definitely want to make it so that way I can upload it. So I will be working on this over the summer. But until then, this has been a pretty good project, and I'm very happy that it got this far without any problems. Well, I'll see you next time I have to procrastinate.